Hour number two starts right now here on the early line. Sirius XM Channel 159, right on the Sports Grid Network. It's Joe Ranieri and Donnie Wright side here on a Wednesday morning. Now, Joe, before we take it into this topic with the NFC East, some of the people out there might be saying like, hey, look at this. Donnie's on with Joe. What's going on? Where is Kevin Walsh? If you didn't know, Joe Ranieri, Wednesday is a massive wrestling day with AEW Wrestling. Kevin doesn't concentrate all that well on Wednesdays. So I do appreciate, Joe, your first and foremost attention with us this morning. And I do thank you for that. Anything I can do, man. I mean, he's the new uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan. Let's be realistic here, man. He's uh, he's all over the map. He, he's putting together quite the stable of wrestlers. Yeah. So I'm glad I can fill in here, Donnie. There we go. Absolutely. Let's get on our way here to the NFC East and have some fun with that because whenever the odds are on the move here, Joe Ranieri, I love to talk about it. And if we preface this entire offseason, opening up the Dallas Cowboys with the FanDuel Sportsbook, they were always the favorite to win this division. But slowly the Eagles making shrewd moves, adding to their roster, the Dallas Cowboys losing players, it felt, on their roster. And here we are today, the last day of August, with the Eagles at a plus 145 to win the NFC East, the Dallas Cowboys at a plus 145 to win the NFC East. Before we get into the teams themselves, do you agree with this line movement? And also, as I asked you before, some of these closing lines. Could we see the Philadelphia Eagles close before week one as the favorite to win this division at the FanDuel Sportsbook? Well, listen, the Cowboys are always the most overhyped, overvalued team to start any season. And on a week to week basis, it's uh, it's hilarious. The Eagles have gotten a lot of hype. And listen, it was the tale of mm -hmm. two halves last year, right? With Sirianni. Uh, it was the, my God, what is this team early on? And then there was the second half, a softer schedule, and they kind of breezed right through it. They did get blown out, but they made the playoffs, right, Donnie? So isn't that really what it's all about at the end of the day? Not a whole lot of turnover. It doesn't shock me that Philadelphia is getting the love here. But when it comes down to it, I don't think Cowboy fans, uh, I don't think we're done seeing a push for the love of the Cowboys, especially if they beat Tom Brady in week one. We know what's going to happen to that number at plus one. It ain't going to be there, Donnie, if they end up beating Brady here on uh, the first weekend, uh, first Sunday night game, is it? Yeah, we're uh, get the 145 now if you're a Cowboys backer because they beat Brady. Yeah, that oh, ain't going to be there. Yeah, that ain't Super Bowl. Good. Yeah, it's been a while for the Dallas Cowboys actually making it to the Super Bowl or quite frankly winning multiple playoff games. We'll see if they can do that. But that price is even right now at the FanDuel Sportsbook over on sometimes show. It's just as simple. Who are you betting on? Like Major League Baseball. Who's pitching on the mound? Yeah. Dominant pitcher? Cool. I don't even care who's at the plate. This guy should throw seven, eight innings here and handle his business. If we equate that to the NFL, who's your starting quarterback? When you take a look at the Philadelphia Eagles, it's Jalen Hurts. Young quarterback made the playoffs last year and then showed in the playoffs like, whoa, man, are you really going to be the future of this franchise with a terrible performance against a very good Tampa Bay Buccaneers team? But if we're looking across, Daniel Jones to the New York Giants, Carson Wentz, a good old friend there for the Washington Commanders, and then Dak Prescott here for the Dallas Cowboys. If we're looking at all of these quarterbacks combined, to me, it's still Dak Prescott, the best of the bunch. And is that reason enough, Joe, to bet a team like the Dallas Cowboys just to win because you think they have the best quarterback in this division? Um... No, you can't bet the Cowboys. There's so much, uh, you know, listen, as betters, Donnie, we tried to avoid variance, right? As best we can, mm -hmm. we try to eliminate it in our thinking. Um, it's Dallas variance Cowboys. That's all they are. You cannot figure this team out on a week-to-week -week basis. There's so many things that can go wrong, namely the head coach. Uh, how long before Mike McCarthy is looking over his shoulder? Uh, how long before the uh, the the... You know, the rumors start flying. I think the Cowboys are a disaster waiting to happen. Kind of hard to invest your money this early on them. It really is. Uh, let's welcome in the radio audience, Sirius XM Channel 159. This is the Sports Grid Network. The early line for Wednesday, it's Joe and Donnie, and we are talking some NFC East football. Now, having said with the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles, obviously the two front runners that we're looking at in this division, and as we know, there's a lot of turnover and a lot of teams, particularly in the NFC East, that like to rotate between division championships year to year to year. Are we shortchanging Ron Rivera and the commanders? Brian Dable now moving over to the New York Giants. Or is it just we're looking at those teams do deserve to be in the rear. The Eagles and the Cowboys will fight this division out. 
y- you are what you are, Carson Wentz, right? Yeah. Uh, and Ron <laughs> Rivera, you are what you are. I mean, uh, no Chase Young, uh, at least initially, so that defense isn't yeah. going to be as good as they could be or can be. So I think the Washington Commanders are going to be a team that may get better and have spurts as the season goes on. I'm not expecting great things early on. I think Carson Wentz and that defense got to figure some things out. If they can get their running backs uh, squared away and not, you know, uh, recovering from bullet wounds, I think we're going to be okay in Washington. Uh, But man, oh man, it's all going to hinge on does Carson Wentz, um, does he just hand games away late in the season? Until I see it, Donnie, I won't believe that uh, he can take that next step. I think he is what he is. Yeah, talking about taking the next step, too, in Philadelphia with Jalen Hurts. It's all set up around them, Joe. Very good offensive line, very good tight end, solid wide receivers, and, you know, just piecemeal running game together. You got the makings of a very good football team, but that doesn't work unless your quarterback is playing at the top of his game. Also keep in mind, as I said, the Philadelphia Eagles do have a lot of draft picks coming up in this next draft. So if Jalen Hurts doesn't work out, they can move on. But my goodness, if he does work out, as we've seen most NFL quarterbacks looking for contract extensions – will be eligible for a massive extension at the end of the season. Let's talk some college football coming up next on The Early Line. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College football today. Of Alabama and winning SEC champions. It's the island of misfit tour. Fantasy sports so, today. You have to understand that. Can they survive those first four games? They go two and two. Pro football two. today. This franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash. In-game live you can all take access. Points. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In game go. live, prime time. I'm going a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. What did you make of this decision by San Francisco to retain Jimmy Garoppolo, have him on the roster in the QB room for 2022? Well, what we heard the entire offseason was how the 49ers were trying to shop Jimmy G the entire time. But they weren't hearing back great offers. Now, it doesn't mean he's going to be there for the whole entire season. As you know, it gives them about two more months before the trade deadline, and they could actually move him before then. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Panthers-Browns is a two and a half point spread now. So the line has moved a little bit. Uh, in fact, maybe you can consider it a decent amount because this was a two and a half Cleveland line for, for quite some time, which puzzled us. What we now have, the Panthers laying just under the field goal totally or very low, 41 and a half. So there's a lot to dissect on what the actual Carolina Panthers are going to be. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Cam Akers was one of the bigger stories of last year, returning very early from an ACL injury. And, uh, and, and you know, what a, what a really great story it was, but unfortunately didn't look very good when he came back. Now, a lot can be attributed to that, and I guess that's why we'll do a deeper dive here. His ADP is 18 in terms of running backs taken. His positional ranking is 18, and overall is going approximately in the third round. The Sports Grid Network.
Rolling through hour number two right here on the grid. This is the early line. Tomorrow it is September and you get that football feel. Sonny Wright said here and Joe Ranieri. We had week zero of the college football season. You got your fill. You saw the guys out on the field. The pomp and the pageantry is back. Now it's time for week one, and the big boys start to take center stage. Before we get into this six-pack of games show that we're going to talk about, week zero into week one, betting philosophies do change. Now, again, this isn't week one of the NFL in the week two where everybody played week one and everybody's going to play week two. So there still are some football teams that have not had their quote-unquote dress rehearsal coming into it. They don't scrimmage other teams. They scrimmage themselves. There are no preseason games. Talk about betting angles for yourself, Joe, that you might take an approach here with a team you haven't seen yet on the field in 2022 here in college. Well, you know, we we know it's not a huge sample size, but we know, Donnie, that one would think Mm -hmm. that a team that has been able to get the rust off, get some playing time, right, Uh, you know, have a game under their belt heading into this week number one in week zero. And we had more games this year in week zero than we've had in years past. So, We have at least, I believe, 10 games, in fact, uh, that are going to feature a team playing their first game versus a team who's already played. Uh, And, well, it might be a little shocking that, yes, it's the team that hasn't played, uh, has the edge uh, against the number here uh, in a small sample size, mind you. But the reality is, uh, yeah, the teams uh, that are uh, new to the football season here, those teams that have not uh, played a game yet tend to do pretty well over those teams that have already played uh, one week so I don't know whether it's more film or what it is I still look Donnie in for the first uh, couple of weeks of the college football season give me stability give me programs that have the same quarterback the same coordinators the same head coach give me continuity give me these teams like a Northwestern for instance Uh, that we know what we're getting, right? It's the same quarterback. We got all of these starters, the same coaching staff. Give me those teams over uh, a team with a whole lot of turnover early on in the season. We saw it last week with Northwestern and Nebraska. I think we're going to see it uh, exposed uh, again uh, over the next couple of weeks here in college football. Wise words by the great Joe Ranieri here entering into week one of the college football season. Let's take a look at some of these because they're going to kick off tomorrow night. And I love this show. You got no NFL this weekend, but we got college football yep. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Kudos to the NCAA. Whoever hooked that one up, this is going to be a winning weekend here for us. Backyard mm. brawl, West Virginia and Pittsburgh, 143-144. On the rotation, 7 p.m. kickoff here. A little bit over a touchdown. Now, this is one of those long-standing rivalries that's getting re-engaged. And again, West Virginia and Pittsburgh. Haven't seen them yet. Pittsburgh going through some changes here. Now, still the same head coach. New offensive coordinator. Kenny Pickett off to the NFL. Jordan Addison plucked from Pittsburgh to go to USC. And we still find ourselves with a seven and a half point favorite. Any thoughts, Joe, in this game between West Virginia and Pittsburgh? It's interesting. Uh, Slovers versus JT Daniels. What is this? USC uh, reincarnated (laughs) here? Like, what's going on? We got a couple of West Coast guys uh, that have now moved on to the East Coast uh, with opportunities here to showcase. Uh, The problem with Pittsburgh is I know Narduzzi and I know all those returning guys on the defensive front there. Defensively, Pittsburgh is going to be sound and solid. Certainly, uh, early on in this season. Whipple's gone. Uh, You know, he's in Nebraska right now. So is Kenny Pickett, right? So I don't know offensively, what are we going to get here, Donnie? I know West Virginia, it's so easy to just discount them. But yet West Virginia every year figures out ways, Donnie, to be competitive, to win games that they should not. Uh, you, You had mentioned it's been a while since these two teams have played one another. Both are going through some changes here uh, this year, namely at the quarterback position. Uh, I I find it hard to lay over a touchdown here in this spot and go against uh, West Virginia, uh, but I do think there's going to be fewer points scored than, uh, than some would anticipate here uh, with the total. So I lean the under, and I would certainly look for West Virginia to keep this game close. 
Yeah, and how about this? The Big Ten also, no strangers to saying like, hey, week zero, week one, we'll match some of our teams up here. 145, 146, Penn State and Purdue. That'll be a kickoff tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern. FanDuel opened up this line at a three, now sits at a three and a half with a 52 and a half. So two conference teams going after it. Is this one going to be easier for Penn State or just any general thoughts that you have with Purdue and the Penn State Indy lines? No, I, I love, love, well, listen, Manny Diaz, you bring him back the turnover chain, what are you going to do there in Penn State? Because I can tell you right now, <laughs> here's what's going to happen with Purdue. Aiden O'Connell, guys, uh, this kid is a monster, certainly throwing the ball. And, uh, you know, Coach Brahms and company, they saw what they had from him last year. It's a shame he didn't have a chance to start the whole season last year because they became a top 10 uh, offense with him throwing the ball under center once Plummer was pushed to the side there at Purdue. Now, he lost a lot of weapons, but Donnie, he didn't have any of those weapons in the bowl game, and he threw for over 500 Mm -hmm. yards. So I think Purdue is going to chuck it all over the yard on Penn State and company there. I think they're in trouble, Penn State, uh, in this game here, and it would not at all shock me if Purdue upsets Penn State game number one this year. Too many changes at Penn State for my liking. I like Purdue's quarterback. I like the offense. I like consistency. And they're going to be consistent throwing the ball this year. Could be a tough week one in Happy Valley. Three games we're going to talk about here on Saturday, college football. Very good ones. Utah, Florida, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Oregon, and Georgia. And obviously, we can't go through deep dives on all three of those games. But I do like you talked about continuity, bringing players back mm-hmm. with a coaching staff that's been around. That's Kyle Winningham and the Utah Utes. I think they go into Florida and handle their business. Notre Dame, Ohio State, Joe. We look at this game as a 17 point favorite here for the Fighting Irish, excuse me, for the Ohio State Buckeyes over the Fighting Irish. Then, Oregon and Georgia. How about that? Mm. If you're in, hey, you know what? Let's play a neutral site game here. Okay. Where are we going to play if you're the Oregon Ducks? Well, how about you play in Atlanta? Neutral site? What are you talking about here? Georgia went at the drive 10 miles to get to the dome and play in this one. Of those three games on Saturday, which one's piquing your attention or a couple quick tidbits on either one of these games here, Joe? Two words Jim Knowles, guys. Ohio State is going to run over Notre Dame run them there is no number high enough now while it looks I think it's one of those games Donnie where it's Notre Dame it's you know it's perception versus reality new coach new offensive line new quarterback for Notre Dame going into Mm -hmm. oh uh nothing new in Ohio State offensively Let's go, Stroud. Let's get it, uh, Nijigba. You've got guys that are coming back that are going to be monsters, and you've got a defensive coordinator now that everywhere he has gone, uh, he has gotten guys to elevate their game. Knowles is going to do it for Ohio State. This game is a blowout. When I tell you blowout at the shoe here, hey, welcome to the coaching Mm -hmm. ranks, Coach Freeman there in Notre Dame. Ain't going to work out all well for you there in week one. Yeah, how about that? Freeman loses the bowl game, gets shelled in week one. Notre Dame backers, why do we hire this guy now? Granted, nobody's really going to expect them to go into Ohio State and win, but you're right. When you talk about a dominant running back, a dominant quarterback, and a dominant wide receiver, minus nine and a half here as a spread for Ohio State in the first half. They probably should be up double digits. Some thoughts on Florida State, LSU. You brought up the topic here, Joe. Florida State already had a dress rehearsal in one. LSU's taking the field for the first time with a new head football coach. They're favored by three. Quote, unquote, neutral site down in the Dome in New Orleans. Some thoughts on this one, Joe. That's a lot of turnover there at LSU, though, isn't it? Uh, A lot of exits, a lot of newness there. Not sure they're all going to buy in to Coach Kelly right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the accent. I don't know, but I do know uh, that Florida State got a lot more continuity. I think Florida State... Uh, We're going to have opportunities to back them in a couple of underdog roles early in this season. This being one of them, I think Florida State handles business here and uh, doesn't exactly welcome Brian Kelly to the SEC here. Give me FSU to get it done and welcome back Florida State. Yeah, welcome back college football week one in the house, as we said, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday. But you know what? There's still Major League Baseball people. We're going to cover that over the next few segments. Come on back. It's the early line on Wednesday.
your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's Game Time Decisions, only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The morning after. Do you believe the Commodores can at least be a pesky team within the SEC this season? I've been saying it forever that Vandy is not a continental United States type of team. They needed to get off the mainland to really find their mojo. And boy, did they ever in that third quarter against Hawaii. I mean, look, they are uh, they are in a very tough spot in SEC play. They're still trying to win their first SEC game in the 2020s decade. That's, that's what we're talking about the here. The Sports Grid Network. The early line going for 50 home runs now with still a lot of room left here. The player special is out there over 61 and a half home runs is plus 285. I know the Yankees lost and yes, that matters. But Aaron Judge is just having a special, special season. 50 is a huge marker number there. He gets that last night. And then we're trying to take a look at where that's going to be in the future. 59 and a half would be up next because 60 is a big marker. Only on Sports Grid. Right back at it here on the early line for Wednesday morning, August 31st. Joe Ranieri, Donnie Wright side here. We talked about some college football, some NFL football. It's time to flip the page because we still do have a month left of the Major League Baseball regular season, followed by the playoffs and ending probably somewhere in that first week or two of November. But Talking about awards here, Joe, before we get to the games themselves, if I'm looking at the FanDuel Sportsbook right now and I want to bet on the NL MVP, I can. If I want to bet on the AL MVP, I can do that. How about Cy Young? Sure thing. National League. Oh, let me bet on the American League Cy Young Award. The odds are not up. So I want to ask you this question, which I talked about last year. When Jacob deGrom went down, he was having a sensational season. I even joked, he probably doesn't have to pitch again. Obviously, we were wrong on that with two and a half months left to go in the regular season. He was surpassed. Somebody else won the Cy Young Award. Now, looking at the American League this year, Justin Verlander was the top dog by a decent margin. He has an injury. No odds up. Joe, what are we thinking the FanDuel Sportsbook is thinking right now with the odds the rest of the way? And also, do you think that Verlander can still win the award? And does he have it already wrapped up if he doesn't pitch again? I understand the uh, the pulling it down because it's not just Verlander, McClanahan too, who was right up there. True. Also, um, you know, being pulled last night. There's some question marks going for tests again today with the shoulder. So there's a lot of uncertainty at the top. But listen, it, it, if you hadn't bet Verlander already, I don't know what you were looking at. I, I, he was the clear favorite. And to me, if he doesn't pitch another inning here, Donnie, in September uh, until the playoffs. 
he's done more than enough. What, 23 starts this season, uh, 1.87 ERA. Uh, he's got nearly a six uh, strikeout to walk ratio. His It's ridiculous what this guy has done at 39 years old coming off of Tommy John surgery. He is the Verlander of old. He's already proven it. He's done more than enough to be able to solidify this award with about 30 games uh, left here. And what I'm hearing and what all I'm reading is that this will be a very short stint. He will be back uh, before we know it. His last outing, he was still hitting 95, 96 on the gun. So, you know, mm. better safe than sorry with the postseason coming up. But Verlander, by far, has done enough, I think, at this point to already uh, solidify the Cy Young Award. Yeah, certainly getting better with age at this point. We'll see how it factors out. And also when the FanDuel Sportsbook does reopen betting for the AL Cy Young markets here. Let's get into the Major League Baseball card because it is Wednesday. Sometimes we don't get a full card, but we certainly do have one today. Getaway day, as we like to say, in Major League Baseball. We also have afternoon action. Let's take a look at 9-13, 9-14 on the rotation. 205 Eastern first pitch here. That's between Houston and Texas. A minus 142 favorite here for the road team. The Houston Astros going up against the Rangers. Martin Perez will be on the mound today versus Javier. Some quick notes on this one. Over the past 30 days in Major League Baseball, if we take a look at Martin Perez, XFIP around four, which is okay. Strikeout percentage, show coming in right around 26%. He's done very well against right-handed batters. He's faced 105 batters, Joe, from the right-hand side 284 weighted on base percentage, ISO of 135, fantastic. He's actually got to hit around more from lefties than righties. But if you look at this roster today for the Houston Astros, it's stacked with right-handed bats who have done well against left-handed pitching over the past month. So it's one of those. Does Martin Perez work out today, or does the Houston bats work out today? A minus 142 price. Any thoughts on this game between the Strohs and the Rangers here? So if I was to lean towards... Perez, I would have to also believe that he's got enough stuff to be able to strike Houston Astro batters out. The problem with that theory is that the Houston Astros right-handed hitters don't strike out. In fact, they're the lowest in the league against left-handed pitching with just above 12%. So they, uh, they are not a strikeout team. They are a team that puts the ball in play, and that is not good news for Perez. And in the meantime, Javier, he's had a pretty good season uh, as well. So I anticipate once again that the bats of the Houston Astros will be the difference. I think once you get to that bullpen of Texas, uh, all bets are off. So uh, I'm anticipating it's a bigger number, but I'm anticipating the Astros to handle business against the lefty like they usually do in these spots here. Uh, Donnie and uh, beat the uh, the Texas Rangers who are pretty much underperformed in every category this year. Gimme, 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 gimme more Houston Astros as many ways as I can get them. Team total, first five, you name it, they're mm. going to get it done again today. Take a look at that seven and a half total. One of the better under teams in Major League Baseball. Certainly those Houston Astros. We'll skip over a game that we were initially going to talk about. Another afternoon game between Pittsburgh and Milwaukee. But we don't have an official starter or lines up there for the Pittsburgh Pirates game. Taking on the Brewers. So we'll go right to San Diego and San Francisco. Now as we know, Joe, San Diego fighting for their playoff lives. We thought they were going to get that added boost with Fernando Tatis joining Juan Soto and Manny Machado. And off and away they go. And oh, yeah. One of the better pickups in Major League Baseball, Josh Hader, as a closer, has turned into a disaster. Trying to find their way through. We take a look at the game today. 903-904 first pitch, 345 Eastern. That's going to be Musgrove versus the lefty Wood. A minus 142 favorite here for the San Diego Padres. Total listed between seven and a half and eight. It looks like now as we're showing a seven and a half on the screen. If we're taking a look at this game, the seven and a half piques my interest a little bit. Because these are the games I like. Because typically you look at these two in that big ballpark for myself and say, hey, you know what? Let's go with an under. But if we take a look at Alex Wood over the past 30 days, his ex fifth Joe close to five, so struggling a little bit. And he's a left-handed pitcher, has dominated left-handed batters. But if we look from the right side, 89 batters he's faced, a 416 weighted on base percentage, coupled with an ISO power number of 295, you're going to get a ton of right-handed bats in the lineup today for the San Diego Padres. If we flip it over and take a look at how Joe Musgrove is going to handle his business, ex around the four-and-a-half range, which is okay, strikeouts over the past month hovering around 20 percent 
But how about this? 60 batters, Joe. He's faced from the left-hand side. A 344 weighted on base percentage and an ISO of 278. Why is that important? At least six left-handed batters are expected to be in the lineup today for the Giants. So I'm going to lean on a sneaky total over today between the Padres and the Giants. Any looks from you today, Joe, on this one? Listen, Musgrove has gone the wrong way here in the second half. Uh, he hasn't looked as uh, what he was uh, earlier on. But, the you know, we've got a similar situation with the Astros and the Rangers as we do here. We've got one team throwing out a lefty going up against another team that has, well, crushed lefties, especially on the road here. The Padres have been uh, phenomenal against left-handed pitching. Uh, Wood has had, shall we say, uh, some iffy starts here. He has also had uh, mm -hmm. some bad luck, but it's very hard for me to get behind the Giants offense uh, going up against uh, Musgrove here and expect them to all of a sudden explode uh, offensively. I can't do it. I think the price, I think the price when it opened, Donnie, was pretty reasonable for, get, for giving me yep. Musgrove in this situation, and I still think it's uh, it's pretty going. So even though he's about... As mediocre as uh, Joe Musgrove has been here, I do think this is a spot in which the bats will be too much uh, for the left-handed wood here. And then once you get to that bullpen of the Giants, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> I'll take the Padres to get, it, uh, to get it done and score more runs than the Giants again here today to finish it off. Joe's secret sauce. Wait till those late innings in those Giants games. We'll see if it plays out today out on the West Coast in an early bout. Starting the night card tonight, 9-15, 9-16, 6-10 as a first pitch Eastern here. That's Baltimore and Cleveland. Lyles will be on the mound versus Tristan McKenzie. Heavy favorite for McKenzie and the Guardians today at a minus 172 price. Eights across the board. If I look at this game, sometimes I like to keep it simple. McKenzie has been decent over the past 30 days. and certainly seems like he's getting his major league career off the ground. Lyles is a very average pitcher, a 5x FIP over the past month, low strikeout percentage, left-handed batters facing the right-handed Lyles to the tune of a 366 weighted on base percentage, right-handers at a 350. I'm going to keep it simple and short in this game. I'll take the first five innings run line here for the Guardians in hopes that they're up one run or more by the end of the fifth inning. But these two teams fighting for playoff positioning here, Joe, in late August. If I'm backing Baltimore, I'm not. I'm doing it in the first five because that Guardians bullpen is just phenomenal, uh, guys. Yeah. It's going to be very hard for Baltimore to come back in a situation late games because the Guardians bullpen has not allowed an earned run over its last 30 and a third innings, guys. That dates back all the way to August 5th. They have been lights out. And you're also talking about Cleveland, what, 14 and 7 now in its last mm -hmm. 21 games? Uh, Mount Castle having all sorts of problems here in that lineup, dropping all the way to seventh for Baltimore. He was a big part of their resurgence here. Uh, listen, I like Lyles. Um, I think Baltimore uh, is motivated, although they haven't been good. They've scored three or fewer runs in the last four games here, Donnie. So maybe just maybe the way I should be looking at this is the first five under in this spot mm -hmm. and anticipate both lineups. Maybe getting off to a little slow start here against these uh, pitchers. But after that, we can uh, readjust. Keep an eye on that bullpen of Cleveland. It has been lights out. If Cleveland has the lead in the sixth inning, Donnie, yep. You know where I'm going there in the game. Clinch it, lock it down, lock it out. Now, this game, I'm glad we're toward the end of the segment because there's not a real need to go over a lot of the intricacies here between Oakland and Washington, 927, 928 on the rotation. Seven o'clock starts tonight. Eight and a half is the total, and that's why I want to talk about it here. Caprillion and Sanchez on the mound. Two bad starting pitchers, two bad bullpens, two bad baseball teams. But yesterday, Joe, it equated to 16 total runs. Is this one of those games where you just say, these two pitchers, I'll fade them. They'll score nine runs total here? Expecting uh, bad teams to do good things <laughs> is never a recipe for success, uh, Donnie. But I'm with you. I think the over is good. But I will say this. The Oakland A's, as bad as they are, they've been playing some of their best baseball. You can only bet the A's on the road. That's where I would lean here today with Caprillion. My goodness. Oakland and Washington, a breakdown here on the early line. Who else would give you that? We got a lot more Major League Baseball to talk about next, so make sure you come back with us.
Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Liu, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The morning after. Do you believe the Commodores can at least be a pesky team within the SEC this season? I've been saying it forever that Vandy is not a continental United States type of team. They needed to get off the mainland to really find their mojo. And boy, did they ever in that third quarter against Hawaii. I mean, look, they are uh, they are in a very tough spot in SEC play. They're still trying to win their first SEC game in the 2020s decade. That's, that's what we're talking about the here. The Sports Grid Network. The early line going for 50 home runs now with still a lot of room left here. The player special is out there over 61 and a half home runs is plus 285. I know the Yankees lost and yes, that matters. But Aaron Judge is just having a special, special season. 50 is a huge marker number there. He gets that last night. And then we're trying to take a look at where that's going to be in the future. 59 and a half would be up next because 60 is the big marker. Only on Sports Grid. Breaking down the Major League Baseball card right here on a Wednesday on the early line. It's Joe Ranieri, Donnie right side. And boy, time is flying, but we got still some Major League Baseball to go and cover. So I'm going to ask you this question. We're going to get into the Seattle Mariners and the Detroit Tigers. Now, as we know, the flipping of the calendar. First part of the season, Joe, everybody thinks they're good and they can make the playoffs. You get around that trade deadline, the haves and the have-nots start to kick in, particularly late August and into September. So if we're looking at the Mariners in Detroit, without even handicapping the game, just broad stroke this for us. Do you take more into account, because you're going to get taxed on some of these Major League Baseball teams now, the teams that it's apparent, they're not playing for anything, they don't care, they're looking to get to the finish line and maybe try out some younger guys when the expanded rosters come up. Do you find yourself taking more favorites late in the season than you did in the beginning of the season? Or what's your outlook in Major League Baseball once September hits? Wait till the playoffs get. Uh, no, I'm kidding. The uh. um, the reality <laughs> is you don't want to go anywhere near these uh, teams. The fact that we're breaking down uh, Detroit, uh, Washington, and uh, the A's in the same five-minute segment is beyond me. Uh, but I will say this here. Keep an eye on the younger guys, the teams that are um, have plentiful young talent in the farm system. They're going to come up. They're going to get chances. And if the one thing we know about these guys – Especially the young guys, Donnie, they're looking to make a name. They're going to play hard. Uh, they're going to play often. And some situations here, teams, 
If they're loaded in the uh, farm system, not worried about draft picks. They're not worried about those types of things this time of year. So the tank is uh, is on with some of these teams, and you just have to be very, very careful because, let's face it, like Detroit, like we watched last night, um, mm-hmm. stick a fork in them. Washington in the past month, stick a fork in them. But teams like the A's we were just talking about, a lot of young guys uh, up. They're having fun. They're playing. There is that... Uh, youthful exuberance here and giving them a shot in the arm, even against bad teams. Now, will they beat the Astro? No, but you have to be cognizant of some of these young uh, teams here with uh, these young players being called up right about now, Johnny, because they are going to have, Donnie, yeah. an opportunity to win some games against other mediocre teams that maybe we didn't think they could, but they might very well. Having said that, there is no way I'm betting Detroit today. Yeah, exactly. If we take a look at the game tonight here, 80 degrees. Best part about the game tonight, Joe, 80 degrees in Detroit tonight with a light wind blowing out to left center field. If we line it up, Gonzalez versus Alexander, two left-handers on the mound, 917, 918 on the rotation. First pitch will be around 710. You do have a favorite here at minus 158 for the Seattle Mariners, and rightfully so. Treated me very kindly yesterday, specifically at the plate. The total listed at 8.5. Now, the Detroit Tigers were one of those teams that entering into the season – Hey, you know what? They might be able to take Joe the next step in 2022 and be a competitive ball club and maybe even rival and say, let's take a look at a playoff push in a wild card race. It's been an abject disaster for them all season. If you just even take a look, like every day I handicap this team, Joe, it seems to get worse Mm -hmm. and worse. Last 30 days for the Detroit Tigers against left-handed pitching. I'm just going to use their anticipated lineup tonight against left-handed pitching, which is ISO power numbers. Now, keep in mind, a 175 ISO power number is very good at Major League Baseball. Above average, 185, 190, 200 in that realm is great. These numbers coming into today, Green, 091, Reyes, 111, Javi Baez, a 0, Haas, a 040, Cabrera, a 0, 130, 167, 136, and another 0 in that lineup today. This is a dead team walking here, Joe Ranieri. Yep, yep, looking at that team total right now and hitting bet to the under. Thank you very much there, uh, Donnie. And not to mention you got Alexander going here today, who, correct me if I'm wrong, just got absolutely crushed in his last start too uh, as well. So it has all the makings. I mean, Gonzalez is not a guy that's going to blow it by you. He pitches the contact. He's done a really good job of limiting the long ball, which is odd for him, but he's done a really good job here over the last month. Uh, It just everything lines up for a a continued fade of Detroit at this particular point against a Seattle team, Donnie. Let's face it. They can ill afford to lose ground by losing to Detroit. Uh, Expect them to come out firing, I think, tonight as well. All right, coming up firing. Are we going to see Diaz close the game firing to Timmy Trumpet? Well, game we're talking about is the Dodgers and the Mets. Anderson, the lefty, will be on the mound. He's got very good statistics this year, specifically with a win-loss record going up against Jacob DeGrom. 907-908 on the rotation. This one's going to be live from City Field at 710 Eastern. Now, yesterday, Joe Ranieri, these lines opened up around that minus 135 price in the favorite for the Mets and DeGrom. And now we've seen that as high as a minus 150. And what I love about this, the six and a half as a total is popping up. We actually had a six on the board yesterday. That game easily went over that number. So if you're looking at this game, is it just this simple? DeGrom is on the mound. I always bet the Mets. Or is there value on a team that's over 50 games above 500, Joe, getting a plus money number tonight up at City Field? Tale of two halves, right? Uh, This Mm. is where a first five versus full game come into Ah. uh, play. Do I trust the Grom? Absolutely. Do I trust the Mets bullpen against a uh, a team like the Dodgers that you mentioned it here, guys, have scored Mm -hmm. a major league leading 690 runs with nearly a 790 uh, OPS? Um, Yeah, now... The Dodgers stranded, guys, keep this in mind, 12 runners, uh, including six in scoring position last night. The odds of them doing that, even with DeGrom on the hill, are little to none. And I will say this, the Dodgers, and we've talked about this over the last month because we saw it just a little while ago, the Dodgers don't ever, ever close as a dog. And when they usually do... 
Guess what? It works out really good in their favor. In fact, over the last couple of years, Donnie, it's only happened a handful of times in which the Dodgers entered a game as a dog. It happened last year a couple of times with Darvish and Musgrove. Uh, it happened uh, this year, and uh, boy, oh boy, DeGrom on the hill, who I don't know, does he make it past the fifth inning, sixth inning? Does he have the lead? I think the under three and a half might not be a bad look in the first five. Uh, but I do think the Dodgers are going to have a live betting opportunity here tonight. The minute uh, the minute he winds down a little bit to Grom and that bullpen gets going, I think the uh, the Dodgers uh, are an opportunity for a live bet here tonight. I'll tell you what's incredible, too, when you look at the Dodgers, because so many times we look at it in the spectrum of like a 17-game season in the NFL. Mm -hmm. It's 162 games in Major League Baseball, and you can count on like, you know, your hand, the amount of times that the Dodgers might be an underdog on the season. It tells you how good they are and why they are over 50 games above 500. So as we segue to two of the better teams in Major League Baseball, we go to two teams that... <laughs> Could have had better seasons. That's the Kansas City Royals and the Chicago White Sox. If we tee this game up tonight, eight ten start. And sometimes, you know, you look at those top games, like, ah, oh, you know what? Maybe the Dodgers could win. Maybe the Mets could win. I'm not too sure if it goes over. Usually some of these lower-level games, you have a definitive answer on what you think is going to take place. And I'm looking towards some runs, particularly from the Chicago White Sox. Bubich, the lefty, be on the mound for the Royals. And Lynn, the right-handed pitcher here for the Chicago White Sox. A heavy favorite, minus 196, and a total sitting at 8.5. My lineup would be, if I'm looking... I do think the Chicago White Sox will score any time, Joe, that they line up against a left-handed pitcher. I usually look towards the White Sox as they've done very well against lefties over the past few years. This year, not as well as before because, obviously, I don't think their team is playing very good baseball at this point. But Bubich over the last 30 days in Major League Baseball, 5x fifth number, low K right here. And to righties and lefties, 372 weighted on base percentage to lefties and to righties at 387. Now, if we look at the lineup tonight here, including switch hitters, we're probably getting nine batters from the right-hand side. Side. Small play for me in this one if I take a look at a team total from the Chicago White Sox and also maybe a first five innings wager on the Chicago White Sox as well. I think they do get the boobich here, but two teams, particularly like the White Sox, Joe. I thought they would win the division. April opens up, like this team's going to walk away. They've been such a massive disappointment on the season, but maybe they can still cash me in a ticket tonight. I Listen, I, I've lost so much money expecting the White Sox <laughs> to not yeah. be three games uh -huh. under 500 right now at this point. And, I mean, when yeah. you look at the numbers, and injuries uh, have absolutely played a role. Now, the good news is, I believe, sure. is Yasmin Grandal is back tonight. They might have their catcher back. I think Roberts is getting, uh, you know, he had some wrist issues, but I think he's going to be uh, okay. Uh, but, I mean, you look at this team. Last night, the 10th loss in their last 12 games, Donnie, with this White Sox team. And, oh, yeah, they've been outscored 73-42 to 42 in that time span. There's just no excuse for this lineup of any sorts uh, to be this, uh, this terrible right now. And Bubich, you had mentioned it. If they can't get to him, he's lost three straight starts. If they can't get to him tonight with that boost in the arm, with Grandal back now behind home plate, Roberts back in that lineup, I don't know what to tell you here. And they can't blame Larusa because he's not going to be there. So um, it's White Sox are <laughs> not for me. Would I be shocked if they lose again? Absolutely not. I'm done being shocked with this White Sox team. Totally underperformed all year long. Yeah, one of those whiffs there. We're talking about picking the division winners before the season started. I was oh. like, man, one of the easier divisions you're going to get is the Chicago White Sox going wire to wire here. And yeah, wire to wire is a bad baseball team is really more like it. Yankees and the Angels, 938 first pitch out on the West Coast tonight. You saw the Yankees last night pick up a victory over the hapless mm -hmm. Angels, including Aaron Judge's 51st home run tonight. I see a little bit of a different picture. Not to say that the Angels will win this game. They're a plus 172 here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. But I do like that under seven and a half. Sandoval, over the past 30 days in Major League Baseball, x fit around four, but check out these splits. To left-handed batters, a 135 weighted on base percentage. To righties, a 298. Garrett Cole in the mound here for the Yankees as well. I don't think this game gets the eight runs, show. I'm leaning on the under here. I, I agree with you. Cole, uh, guys, you may, uh, if you don't know, he grew up uh, right down the road. Orange Lutheran High School is where he played, right down the road uh, from the stadium he's going to be playing in tonight, which is why it shouldn't shock anybody uh, that he is 3-0 and in Anaheim in his career. And, oh, yeah, a 1.42 ERA. As a matter of fact, last year uh, he pitched here. Family, friends, guys he grew up with. 
He struck out 15 Angels last year. I'm thinking, Donnie, that the strikeout prop, I don't care what the number is, uh, might be a pretty good bet here, given the fact that uh, if it's one thing the Angels do really, really, really well, it's miss the baseball against power pitchers. And yeah, I think they're going to miss it a lot again tonight. So I don't care what the number is, what the price is. Cole over his strikeout prop tonight for sure. And I saved the best for last year, Joe, for a reason. Philadelphia Phillies, oh Arizona boy. Diamondbacks. Oh. I should be lining this up going, the Phillies going for a sweep here, and their continued surge of getting maybe even the top wild card position, or at least locking in that number two position. Now the Phillies seem like they want to say, let's make it a sweat for Donnie here for the rest of the month here in September, because today they are a favorite at minus 136. The total is nine. Now, I do think the Phillies hit tonight. I think they hit their team total because Henry's on the mound, a high x fifth number, Joe, a little bit over six, light strikeout guy, walks too many batters. But my goodness, you're countering with Bailey Fulcher. Could this be a third straight win for the Diamondbacks? Oh, Joe, I can't take it. I can't. I really Five-game winning streak, uh, 45 runs scored by this Arizona lineup, which is Oof. goes back to our point earlier, wow. Donnie. Filled with youth, filled with young guys. They look energetic. And I'm looking across at Philadelphia these last two games, and I'm it looks like Father <laughs> Time came in and, and whooped them in the ass. Like, what, what's going on here, Philadelphia? Like, meanwhile, they're playing a yeah. bunch of kids, running around, having a good time. Arizona first five, give it to me, man. I think if it ain't broke, don't fix it, Donnie. And they are crushing it right now. Oh, that's painful here. But you know it's not painful. Working with Joe Ranieri over the last two hours. How much fun was that? We want to thank Joe for waking up with us and joining us on the early line today, doing that yeoman's work. A true professional, Joe Ranieri. But you know what? Coming up next, listen up. I got some topics you're going to want to deal with. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. How does Chicago respond in game two tomorrow against Connecticut? They just got to get better overall play offensively. Only held to 63 points. Obviously, Connecticut is a really good defensive team. And if it wasn't for Candace Parker, folks, with 19, 18, 5, 4, and 6 blocks, yep. that would have been a double-digit home loss. They got to get better play out of Ali Quigley. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. He's ADP somewhere around the eighth round. He's a borderline starter for most in fantasy football, but I tend to agree with you. I, I think that of that range of quarterbacks between like 10 and 15, he seems pretty safe. He does seem pretty safe, and you also know that you're going to have some good spike weeks with him. You know, when Van Jefferson scores one of those long touchdowns, the three touchdown Cooper Cup games. The Sports Grid Network. Sports professor Rick Carl inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. I'm at the U.S. Open, as you can plainly see, but we got a report on something that's even bigger in the short term. Mickey Mantle baseball card just sold for $12.6 million at auction, easily eclipsing the Maradona Hand of God 9.3. The Ali Rumble in the Jungle is up there, too. Honus Wagner at 7.2. All four of those were records when they happened, and people talked about how that is a tremendous 
market. We're moving away from collectibles. It'll never happen again, and here it goes. And here in the tennis center, people are talking about how tennis players, maybe even Serena's retirement, will generate significant dollars. But you add on the normal cards with the NFT process, you've got a significant amount of money. Sports professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game. Today it's been here on the early line as we wrap it up. Last segment of the day, Sirius XM Channel 159, right here on the Sports Grid Network. Donnie Wright side today with Joe Ranieri filling in for Kevin Walsh. Talk Major League Baseball, talk some college football, some NFL action, hit the entire Major League Baseball card. But having said that at this time, I don't know how I feel about this mixed week here. We typically, we have our cut lounge line. We play on Sunday. We get ready to go, but we have that extra week to get ready. And I'll tell you who is really getting ready. That's Baker Mayfield. Listen up. This is a family show on a family network, so I can't read exactly what the quotes was said for Baker Mayfield, but it was blank them up. So you can fill in the blanks on that one as Baker Mayfield is ready for opening day for the Carolina Panthers to take on the Cleveland Browns. We talked about it today with Joe Ranieri looking at that line. Could it eventually hit a minus three-point favorite for the Carolina Panthers over the Cleveland Browns? And oh, what a sweet redemption it would be if Baker Mayfield can beat the good old boys from the Cleveland Browns. He's been in that locker room. He knows the players. They ceremon unceremoniously, I should say, threw him out of that locker room in the favor of Deshaun Watson, who will be suspended for the 11 games to open this 2022 NFL football season. And my goodness, what are the radio airwaves going to be like in Cleveland if Baker Mayfield leads the Carolina Panthers to a victory over the Cleveland Browns and plays well? By the way, talked about it as well. You take a look at this team for the Panthers. You don't want to probably face them week one. Baker's going to be fired up. You got some legitimate weapons at wide receiver and a healthy run CMC, Christian McCaffrey, in the backfield. I'm just as excited as Baker Mayfield is for the opening of the NFL football season. It's just a shame right now that I have to wait this week when typically we would be getting ready just one short week after the final preseason game. But you have to remember, four preseason games in the past has turned into three, so they take a de facto bye week before the season. I can't wait, and neither can we at the Sports Grid Network for the NFL to get underway. But before that happens, Ben Scott Stevens has your attention coming up next. Stay tuned. 